Hello and welcome to Tech Tips. I'm Donnie Gladfelter, and in today's episode, we're going to explore how we can leverage data extraction tables to quickly calculate and quantify the values of my block attributes. So this is a workflow that has many, many different applications, but for the purpose of today's discussion, we're going to explore this through the lens of parking counts. So on my screen, I have a typical site plan. And as we would expect, we have lots and lots of parking spaces. And along each run of parking spaces, we have a block with a number. And that number, of course, tells me how many parking stalls I have along this run. Now, in episode three, we took a look at how we could calculate this number more easily using fields. But at some point, we need to add all of those numbers together to get a total count for an area of my site or perhaps the entire site all together. So how can we achieve that? And the answer to that question rests with data extraction tables. Now, in order to create a data extraction table, what I'll want to do is come over here to the annotate tab of my ribbon. And what is a little confusing inside of Civil 3D, at least, is that we do have this first panel, which is labels and tables. This is just for Civil 3D entities, so ignore that for now. However, if we scan over here to the right a little bit, you'll see that we have a tables panel and we have a couple of options here as well. For our purposes, we want to use this guy right here, which is extract data or data extraction. And if we click on this, it's going to open up a dialog that will allow me to create a data extraction table inside of this drawing. Now, if you've done a similar extraction in the past, so perhaps you've counted parking stalls with this block name before, you can load an existing data extraction. But in my case, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new one. So I'll go ahead and hit next and I'll just put this on my desktop and I'll go ahead and give it a name like parking. Once I've given it a name, we'll go ahead and choose save. And next, it's going to ask me for the data source. Now, what's really powerful about this is while we typically use it just for a single drawing, you can actually scan multiple drawings all at once. So perhaps you're using a common block name across several different drawings. Perhaps it's a multi-phase project and you need to get a quantity from that. Well, we can absolutely do that by adding additional drawings to this interface. In our case, be above and beyond that, we can scan the entire drawing if it's the current drawing, or we can select objects in the current drawing. So if I just wanted to calculate blocks or parking stalls for this area of the site, we can do that. Or if we click the top option here and just include the entire drawing, it's going to calculate the total number of parking stalls across the entire project site. Go ahead and choose the one that fits best for you. Once you've done that, we'll go ahead and hit next. And this is where we really start getting to work. AutoCAD is going to scan the drawing for all of the various things that I can extract data from. And there are quite a few. So we, of course, have blocks and block attributes at that. But we can also do things like text and lines and all sorts of other different things as well. In our case, I'm going to go ahead and filter this list down and kind of pare it down to just what I care about. So in our case, one of the most common things we'll use data extraction tables for will be blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and say display blocks only. In addition to that, data extraction tables are also most often used for blocks that have attribute data. So there's a nice convenient little filter here that will display blocks with attributes only. In our case, we only have two blocks that have attributes in this particular drawing. And the one I happen to know I want is this road stall drawing or block. So I'll go ahead and unselect or deselect the bore and leave only the road stall. From here, we'll go ahead and hit next. And this is now going to display all of the various properties that I can extract from whatever objects I picked in the previous page. So in our case, this is only showing the properties for my road stall or my parking stall count block. So you can see we've got all sorts of properties here and from color to block unit to author to file name, all sorts of stuff that I probably don't really care about too much. In my case, really the only thing I care about is the block attribute inside of this block. So somewhat counterintuitively, what I'm going to do is come over here to the category filter. This is all the category of prior call the categories of properties for this block. And I'm actually going to deselect what I want, which is an attribute. And I know this seems counterintuitive. 
However, if we right click on this now, we can then choose invert selection. That's a quick and easy way just to get to one or two categories versus deselecting all the stuff that you don't want. Now, in this case, this is a pretty simple block. We have just one property uh, or one block attribute called number stalls. So that's exactly what I want. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Now from here, it's going to scan the drawing and count up all of the parking stalls. And since we didn't filter this down to a specific area, this is going to be for the entire drawing. Now, if we're trying to get a total count, there's a couple of ways that we can do this, but what I find easiest is by default, AutoCAD will combine identical rows. What that means is how many parking runs do I have in this case with nine stalls? And just so happens I have two. Likewise, the number of runs that I have with 10 stalls are nine. The number of stalls with 18 uh, stalls is six and so on down the line. We can make this work, but again, I find it a little bit easier if I disable this property that once again is enabled by default, which is combine identical rows. So we'll go ahead and deselect that. And this will give me a count for every block insertion of the parking stall block in the drawing. So since we don't care about the count anymore, we'll go ahead and clear that out. Likewise, I don't really care about the name column either. So we'll go ahead and deselect that too. So here, all I'm left with are the number of stalls. So this is fine and good, but again, it doesn't get me to the goal of calculating the total number of stalls across the entire project. So in order to do that, what I need to do is right click on stalls here at the very top. And you'll notice that we can show a count column and a name column, and there's some other options that look really interesting that are grayed out. So we have things like insert totals footer, which is exactly what I want, but you'll notice that it's grayed out. So how can we enable this option? Well, we need this property to be seen by the data extraction tool as a number. And the easiest way to do that is, again, right-clicking on stalls, We'll come up here to where it says insert formula column, and we're going to go ahead and click that. I'll give this a name. I'll just call this stalls without the hashtag or pound sign, or if you're particularly uh, resourceful and odd, Octothorpe. Nonetheless, uh, what I'm going to do here is for the formula, we're just going to pick into the formula, and I'm going to pick stalls right here. I'll just double click on it, and that's all I need to do. I'll go ahead and say OK. And you'll notice what it does is it basically makes a carbon copy of what I have here on the left and gives me the total number of stalls on the right. Now, you'll notice with the decimal points, that's indicating to me that AutoCAD is seeing this as a number. And since it sees this as an actual number, we can right click on this column. And now that really interesting option that I had a bit earlier, insert totals footer is enabled for me. And here, if I just click sum, you'll see at the very bottom, it gives me a total count of 463. This is really awesome. So let's go ahead and hit next. Now, the final page, or one of the final pages at least, of the data extraction wizard is what do I want to do? Where do I want to output this table? We can insert it as an AutoCAD table. That's the first option. Or we can actually output it to an external file, like an Excel or CSV file or even Access Database. While the output to external files seems kind of interesting, keep in mind this will only be a snapshot. If you want a dynamic table that's gonna update as you add and remove additional stalls, go ahead and pick this top option right here, the insert data extraction table into drawing. So with that selected, we'll hit next. And this is going to take me to a version of the table command inside of AutoCAD. And again, we just need to give AutoCAD some basic information about this table. So I might give it a name like parking count in this case for the header, and we'll basically leave all the other defaults for our case here. So with that, we'll hit next. And finally, it just gives me a confirmation. We'll go ahead and hit finish. And AutoCAD is now going to prompt me for a place to place this table. Now, since I do have my UCS rotated, things are going to come in a little askew, but we can uh, take a look at things here. Uh, just uh, tilt your head a little to the right here. You'll notice that I have a total count, in this case, of 463. So let me go ahead and split my view into two viewports. I want to go ahead and be able to see this number here on uh, the left-hand side of my screen right there. 
and let's come over here to my drawing and let's imagine for a moment that we're going to drop off a few stalls here. So maybe I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take off this uh, last stall here. I won't worry about drafting the update here. I'm just going to change the parking count line like so. So I'll go ahead and remove that off. You'll see that previously our count was 16 and 18. If we do a quick regen here, you'll see that the count decreases by one for each of those. And that's fine and good, but this table has not updated. Now, the good news is data extraction tables will update as you open the drawing. However, if you want to force a refresh, just go ahead and click inside of them. And then from the contextual ribbon tab that opens up this table cell column, or ribbon tab, under the data panel, you'll have a command here called download from source. It's basically gonna tell AutoCAD to rerun all the stuff that we just configured. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And when it does, you'll see that my parking count changes to reflect the changes in my parking count. Now, this also works if I were to update an individual block in here as well. So if I double click on this block, and let's imagine for a moment, I change this to something like 10 uh, from 15. So once again, even though this is not a dynamic label that's kind of generated from this field, the data extraction table is gonna work here as well. We can just pick here, say download from source, and you'll see that the number updates as well. So the good news is to use this, you don't have to use the fancy field method that we have for a lot of this drawing. It will work for any value that you insert into a block attribute. So there you have it, a quick way to calculate the quantity of blocks or block attributes inside of our drawing, leveraging a data extraction table.